Yeah, what's going on? Sturdy back at it again with another interview. We have T here today. You're gonna find out what she does in a minute. But um, I'm just so appreciative to be here. Um, you know, I am repeating myself. I have to tell myself this is a second take. I just feel like I'm repeating <laughs> myself. But um, I was saying that this, it, you know, it, was, it felt like a follow-up process, almost like a client, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you reach out to people who you feel like are worthy enough for an interview, it's going to take a process, by the way. But, you know, that's why I'm saying I'm appreciative of this moment. But, yeah. Happy to have you here. I'll say that again. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Finally. Yes. Awesome sauce. Okay, yeah. So, when I walked in here, it was like colors everywhere. It's a pet here. It's... Like just a, a great environment, very warm, and um, I was also saying that, you know, I feel like everyone is creative, right? But I, I wanted to know, like, where do you think you fit in the creative space? Because, like, like <laughs> we're, a like, we're a little different. We're a little different. Yeah, because, like, different. if you give somebody, like, if you give, like, 50 people a room, for example, like, everyone's not going to decorate it the same. Exactly. So, yeah, I think for us, it was really just, you know, we wanted it to feel like home, obviously, um, but also a space where we could really work. And I think when we first moved into this building, it was really like, OK, I feel an energy here, you know, and that's super important to me because I want to make sure always that whatever I'm feeling, I'm able to bring that into my space. And I wanted to, to feel that way when other people come in. So hopefully you felt welcomed and warm, as you say. And um, I don't know, there's just an energy here. So yeah. I'm For super sure. excited it about it. It also had a smell. It was good, smelling good. I, <laughs> you mentioned I love us. candles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too, actually. Yeah, I like, and I saw the stress relief. I like that candle. Yes. Very much. You mentioned us, who is? Us. Us is myself and my husband, um, Corey Strong. I'm T Strong, by the way. And um, we've been married for 25 years. Long, long time. <laughs> um, so we run the business together. You know, we've both been in the industry. And when I say the industry, I mean fashion and footwear. For about 20 years um, right out of college I have to give my school a shout out North Carolina and T State University Aggie pride Aggies do <laughs> hashtag uh, exactly so um, we met in school um, he's originally from Newark New Jersey which is obviously where we are and um, I'm from North Carolina a little town right outside of Greensboro called Reedsville and so we um, you know, I've always had big dreams. I think that's the, the thing that made me really know that he was the person for me was that the things that we talked about as far as like making a business, um, wanting to be entrepreneurs, he's very much a let's just do it type of person. I'm the one who will plan it until, you know, next year and mm -hmm. never get anything done. So I think we complicate, we complement each other well because, you know, he'll be the one that's like, I got the keys to this place. Like, he actually did that with the shoe store, which we'll come back to um, with no inventory, by the way. Um, <laughs> so he just jumps out there and then I have to be I like, OK, it. let me try to, you know, catch up to you. So I think we complement each other well in that way. And we've had a few businesses. I call us serial entrepreneurs, but um, we've had a few over the years. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. I took this Ty Lopez course and he was saying how you break it up. When you talk to people like pace is p a c e practical action no it's s social and emotional those are the different types of people and so you reminded me of like okay. practical and he reminded me of action yeah yeah i think i'm pretty pra practical most of the time like in my mind everything is big and imaginative but then when i start to like really think of the process to get there um sometimes i overcomplicate things and i know that to be one of my things that i'm working on you know to be better at um but at the same time i know that i put a lot of thought into it and i personally feel <laughs> that that's important you know i think you should fly by the seat of your pants sometimes but sometimes you also need to really like think your decisions through yeah. yeah, you actually answered one of my questions that I was going to ask, 
um, about partnership, you said how he like is kind of different from you and how it, you know, correlates and like, you know, it's perfect. Yeah. Do you feel like working with the same type of vibe, like, you know, like practical and practical, do you think you would? Well, that? um, I think sometimes if you have two people that like to plan and they really are deep into their mind and just think all the time, you might not get anything done. <laughs> um, whereas if you have two people who are just action type people and don't really think it through, you might get a lot done, but you may make a lot more mistakes. I don't know. You know, I can really only speak from our experience and I feel like that mix of the two is really what makes us who we are, you know, it makes us successful in this business. Yeah. So what is this? This business. Okay. So Dirty Souls Footwear Group is um, the name of our company. And so we manufacture shoes. That's our prime thing. Like our, our thing that we say is we do shoes. That's it. You know, so regardless of what that means to everybody else, it really is we make shoes um, and not just make them, but we, we make brands. Um, we sell brands. We market brands. We um now we're starting to teach on um, you know how to make your own sneaker and so part of that really is um just more of a give back for us not just to the community um but really to create a way to get people to think more creatively you know i feel like a lot of the younger generation um, is in their phone and technology all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because there's a lot of information out there. And I, I'm one of those people who are a firm believer in using whatever access to information you can, because our ancestors didn't have that, you know. So at the end of the day, whatever's in front of you that you can use to make yourself better, I'm all for it. Um, I do think that sometimes having that direct access doesn't allow them to get in here and really think and not just be consumers of information, you know, that somebody's throwing at you because you came here with your own thoughts, you know, and so exploring those a lot more is kind of what we're trying to do through the course. Um, so to back up a little bit, we have a few brands that we've made over the years um, that we've either you know, joined somebody who's already had it started, but then really couldn't push it to the next level or didn't know how to get it out to market. So um, Dirty Souls, we do marketing, we do sales, we do distribution, and you can have it a la carte or you can have all of it, you know, depending on how we work. Um, typically we will own a percentage of that company as well um, because ownership is important <laughs> um, and you should have that, especially as an entrepreneur. So. We had a boot brand called Sumiko um, and just even further back than that, we we did, you know, Basque, a solo, like all these other brands that my husband has worked for and with over the years. And then I've always been more so on the clothing side. So when I was in corporate America, um, I've worked for Nautica, Calvin Klein, you know, just a few different brands out there. Um, the Source magazine way back when. And it just taught me a lot about the industry and about the business and it let me know that there are so many things that we could do ourselves you know we've been doing all this stuff for other people why not do it for yourself and so that's kind of how dirty souls was born um, in addition to that because we're here in the fabulous city of newark new jersey um you know i gotta shout out my city um you know we want to make sure that we're giving kids an opportunity to learn more about the footwear industry. If you really think about it, like everybody connects over sneakers. And when we were younger, it was more about sneakers and clothes and chains, you know, cause I grew up in the, in the nineties when I was in high school. So <laughs> just dating myself, but, um, but yeah, so now it seems like everything is just about sneakers. You know, that's all the kids seem to care about, which is cool, you know, because, there's so much creativity that they have that they could put into that. So we're teaching um, an after school program class at Weekway High School here also in Newark. And um, those kids are amazing. I mean, like some of the things that they, some of the ideas that they've had already just were mind blowing to me because I didn't even think that they would, you know, truly grasp the concept so early um, in the process, but they're excited about it and we're excited to, to work with them. Understood. Yeah, I was thinking back when you said like bringing like 
how to make a sneaker like when I was in school like <laughs> I mean not even to say like when I was in school but like it's just like you know non-existent yeah and it's like you know I've recently seen like you know like all these type like African drumming or like eating like in-depth science programs mm -hmm. or like you know just all types of stuff that you know schools are now allowing to come in and that's cool like it is because everybody's not going to college right like some people just want to do something different. And I think when we were growing up, when I was growing up, um, there were a lot of programs that existed during the school day that don't exist anymore. I mean, even like Woodshop and Home Ec, like people are graduating high school, have no idea how to cook, you know, and that's not just for girls. It should be, you know, everybody got to eat. So <laughs> at the end of the day, that's something you should know, you know. Um, and so I think that's kind of a lost art that they're the focus has really just been on go to college go to college go to college and there's nothing wrong with that you know i went to college <laughs> so it's, it's nothing wrong with that but everybody may not e either have the ability to do that you know from a financial perspective or maybe just their lifestyle just really isn't isn't built that way um so we want to be able to share a different alternative and at the same time you know, you can continue this education. You can go to the Fashion Institute of Technology if that's what you want to do. You know, you can take this information and, and parlay it into that. And either you could take, you know, the same information and make your own shoes and decide you want to be a, um, you know, in production and distribution like we are. Or you could take that information and go work for like an Adidas or, you know, whomever, whatever brand you like. So... You go from being a platform that, you know, others stand on and, you know, not the opposite way, right? Yeah. Um, that's a journey or a step in itself. <laughs> um, <laughs> For sure. <laughs> you go to teaching classes or, you know, or let, before that, you know, actually creating, actually doing the field work, actually, you know, creating the credibility. Then you go to teaching what's the future look like wow the future so um there's there's so, so many ideas in our mind about the future um i think there are there's a lot of arms this thing could take take on what we ultimately would love to be able to do is as we're teaching we want to um, take some of those students and teach them how to be teachers of this exact same program, you know, and they can take this program and, and go, you know, teach other people, teach teachers, you know, maybe it becomes a, I don't know, a CTE program, you know, it's something that's offered in high schools, community college, you know, whatever. Um, I just see it as a way to be able to share the 25 years of you know, experience that we have in the industry and get them there faster, you know, because when, most of the time when you work these jobs, they don't really tell you everything, you know, you got a trial and error, you got to learn, you know, all the different ins and outs of it yourself. And if I could save somebody else younger than me, the time that we put in, you know, then they can take it further. And that's really what it's about for us. You know, Dirty Souls is, and it's, and it's S-O-L-E-S, like the bottom of your shoe. Yeah. I have that issue sometimes. People are like, what? <laughs> um, no, I want to be associated with that. And I'm like, dude, really? Right. So, um, you know, so, and what it really, what it really means is if you're not out in the street, your souls are not dirty. So you're not getting anything done. You know what I mean? You got to be out there. You can't just talk about it. You got to be about it. You have to walk the walk. And if you can't do that, then you really shouldn't be, you know, saying I'm down with the community or I'm down for the community. If you're really not out there, physically out there doing something. So that's the whole premise behind Dirty Souls. Um, and every company that we work with, every brand that we work with, they understand that and they know that it is their responsibility to give back in a certain sort of way as well. So if we're doing a class, we have sponsors, you know, we, um, this class that we're doing with Weekway High School, our sponsor, one of the sponsors um, is a store called Magic Sneaker and they're here, they have um, eight locations. So they're not a huge operation, but they're still, you know, big. And so we've partnered with them on 
a few things in the past. And so, you know, we know that we can call on them and that they'll come in and say, yes, you know, we got you. Um, and, and we know also because they serve this community, you know, you can't be in here and taking dollars from the people who live here and not give back in a certain sort of way. So that's a requirement for us. If you want to do business with dirty souls. You got to know that you got to, you know, come in understanding that you're going to have to do that as well. Yeah. Right before the, um, interview, I was like, yo, like, because she was giving me a, a background, like, you know, cause um, it's best for me to have like a little bit of knowledge um, before I like hop into the interview but I'm like yo this sounds like math but like <laughs> now that she's like explaining it more it's like she's leaving tracks and it's like it's like legendary status because it's like Thank so you. many in in interactions and like when when they're when she's gone you know sorry to mention but it's, it's a like, fact it's, like <laughs> it's so, gonna happen sooner or later it's so many points and and that's like exposure. And so yes. I wanted to ask like, how did how do you expose your brand? Can we give some value? So our brand. Um, like, or, or like what's your, you know, like when you, when you get your clients or I, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but when you get these brands that reach out to you, what is like, Okay, for me, when I when I get my client, I'm like, you know, going doing my FBI investigation on their on their social media platforms. I'm getting it all ready so that I can teach them what to do on social media with their video. But yeah. for you, you know, it's exposure. You're talking about yeah. like distribution. I don't know if distribution huh. and exposure connects. Yeah, so it, it's a lot. There's a lot of different moving parts. So let's just say we'll take, for example, like a Giza. So that's one of the brands that, that you represent. Thank you very much um, for us. And, and one of the reasons why, and I'll tell you this, one, <laughs> one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure that you had shoes and, you know, was um, serving as one of our brand ambassadors is really because your energy matched the energy for that brand like that's super important to me and Giza really is about um, energy return so there's a, a fantastic designer um, who came up with the whole concept I can't take credit for that um, who came up with the whole design the concept you know all that and he calls the shoe and the the sole of the shoe really like energy return so when you're walking you know you're obviously there's there's energy in the earth you know and this is supposed to bring the shoe itself it it gives energy and returns you know so it's it's a, that's the whole concept and so when i thought about that and i thought about you not just because you know we have history <laughs> obviously but more so because of what you're doing now um I really felt like that that was a match. And so that's one of the things that I really do work hard to do when, um, you know, we bring in a new brand is to try to understand who they are, you know, who's their target audience, who do they want to converse with on a regular basis? Like, um, and so then we try to match them back to different people that either we know or that we, um, you know, are introduced to through other people for me, it's all about grassroots. Like that's the, the era that I grew up in. And I feel like, you know, as we got older, people just started to say, oh, you know, it's this, this microwave thing and we want it to just happen. And you know, I'm going to be a reality TV star and it's going to happen overnight. You know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But at the end of the day, for me, I believe that for a brand to have real connection, they need to start at the root you know, and let it bubble as like an underground thing first and then, you know, sort of move it forward from there. So that's how we approach every client, you know, once we know sort of the direction that they want to go in. And of course, if they already have um, a nice clientele base and they don't necessarily need our happy faces to be the, <laughs> the face of the brand, that's another thing, you know, altogether. But you know, for us, it really is about the genuine connection between the consumer and the brand. You know, that's a real thing. I think so anyway. Where do you find yourself at most exposing yourself? Like here, at parties? When you say exposing, events, what do you mean? Like building your network, I guess. Um, so for us... Because you said like you, in the process you said, 
like connecting them with people. So you can't connect pe with people with people if you don't know people. So oh, we know tons of people. <laughs> I was wondering like how you find, like, how, you, how do you meet people? 20 something years, I've met a lot of people. So because, because we've been in this industry for so long, they're not, there aren't a lot of people in fashion and or footwear that we don't know. Um, a lot of, a lot of the folks that we know are people who have been, and I like to call them the people who, who really just made everything happen. You know, there's always this one person out there that you're like, okay, you know, it's their brand, but then there's a total team of, you know, 20 other people that's behind them and they're the machine that makes everything happen. So though you may not have seen their face, they're literally the ones that made everything happen. Like if you've ever gone to, you know, like, um, I don't know any of these shows, the morning shows that come on and you see the people who are on the couch and they're doing the talking and the interviewing. And then there's like 40 other people behind the scenes is really making everything happen. They're the SME, you know, they're the subject matter expert on whatever it is they do, you know, whether it's working the camera or the lights or, you know, whatever. So um, those are most of the people that we know. And not that we don't know the people in the front because we do um, as well, but you know, those are, are the relationships that we have built over the years. And what I would say to aspiring entrepreneurs is to, you know, continue to, to get out there and network and do all those things and make sure that you keep in contact with those people. And when you do call on them, call on them with something real. You know what I mean? Don't call on them every five minutes for the fleeting little thing that you're working on, whatever that may be. And so I think that's the reason why our relationships have always been so strong is because if I do call on somebody that, you know, I've known for this long or whatever, and I know that they have a certain level of influence, they know that if I'm calling, that means I got something, you know, and they can actually take that and it'll be mutually beneficial. It's not just me calling and say, hey, what, you, what can you do for me? I've already thought about, you know, what they're going to get out of it as well, as much as I possibly can, because I don't always know their goals. But, you know, as much as I can say, I, I know you're working on this and this will fit, you know, right in that or girl, it's a check in it. You know what I'm saying? One or the other, you know? And so I think that's how we keep our relationship so strong and we've built them over the years. And so now it's easy for me to pick up the phone and call somebody and, you know, get whatever I need done. Yeah. It's fancy. I'm just saying that's right. <laughs> um, what do you feel like because you said 20 years and I am warning you about this but what do you what do you feel like your biggest obstacle was that you have overcame like within those 20 years fear of failure I can answer that so fast <laughs> fear of failure and it sounds crazy as a serial entrepreneur but um you know, you start over all the time. And that's really what that means. When people say, I'm a serial entrepreneur, it's like you think, oh, this person has been successful in every one. And it's like, eh, you know, maybe not. And But I look at everything we've done, um, honestly, as a success. I mean, the, the first thing we ever did, um, you know, was own a club, a nightclub in, in North Carolina. And we were still in college. Like, it was the craziest thing. We, we just... Um, and I can't even say we, but my husband found the space at the time we were just dating. And I remember him driving into the parking lot and I'm like, why are we here? Because this is an abandoned building. Like, what is going on? And he's like, I means? want that. No, he just no, said, I want that. And I'm like, what that? You know, <laughs> he's like, this building would be a really dope club. And, you know, we could really make it happen. And I'm looking at him thinking to myself, dude, I'm like 18 years old. What are you talking about? You know, but at the same time, I was also thinking like, this is it. Like, these are the thoughts that I've had in my head and I really have never put them out because when I thought about it, you know, growing up in North Carolina, I don't think I really knew many black people who owned businesses. And if they did, it was a barbershop or a hair salon. You know, it wasn't a nightclub. It wasn't um, a footwear production company. <laughs> you know, it wasn't anything like that. And so to to have that, you know, be part of his thought process. And it was already internally part of mine. And we hadn't even talked about that type of stuff yet. Um, it was, it was just refreshing, you know, when you meet kindred spirits, it just, it really works out. So we had that, we had a rim shop. Um, we actually had two different clubs in, in um, North Carolina at the time. Um, God, what else did we have? We had a, we had a shoe store 
um, in South Orange, which is that occasion that you are about to mention where he literally came home one day with the keys. And I'm like, what are these the keys to? <laughs> because this is a regular occurrence in my life, you know? Like, what have you done now? Um, and it was just, you know, he got the space and that was it. I'm like, do we have inventory? Like, what are we gonna sell? We'll figure it out. You know, he's definitely one of those that's jump out the plane and build the parachute on the way down, <laughs> uh, which I love at the same time. But, um, so yeah, you know, to, to do all these different things, it takes courage and it takes tenacity and it takes this unyielding belief in yourself, you know, that I didn't always have, you know, I think I've over the years developed that, but at the same time, it's kind of like, shit, what if it doesn't work? You know, then what are we going to do? Um, and so you just, you just keep going, you know, you just keep going. And when it's done, I don't look at it as like when we closed, when we closed the sneaker store, um, I didn't look at it as a failure. I looked at it as that chapter ended and now we're starting another one, you know, and throughout that, those times we've had corporate jobs and jumped in and out. And my parents would be like, where are you going to retire from? And I'm like, nowhere, you know, because that their generation, that's what they did. You know, my parents worked at wherever they worked for, you know, 20 something years or 30 years or whatever it was. And then they retired and that's kind of typical, you know, but that just wasn't the life that I ever really wanted. And not because I felt like it was bad or, you know, unworthy or anything like that. Like my parents did a great job. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it just, it didn't feel like adventure to me. You know, it didn't feel like something that really resonated with my spirit. And I always say when my life is over, I want to have explored every possible thing that came up, you know, in me. Um, that to me is freedom. You know, that's what that is, is just to be able to explore all your options, all your ideas. I hope that answered the question I kind of went around about, but. <laughs> yeah. You also remind me, like, I was gonna ask you, like, how do you know, like, you know, for sure, like, this is it, like, this is gonna happen, and you, you don't know. Yeah, you don't you don't really know. You you have no idea. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you have to know in here. And I think that that's what makes it happen out here. You know, once you know what you whatever you're doing, if you feel great doing it, if you're still up at 3 a.m. doing it and you think it's still, it's three in the afternoon, you know, like that is when you are in your zone. You know, whatever that thing is clearly it's powering you on a completely different level to where you don't need sleep, but you should sleep. Uh, <laughs> that's something that entrepreneurs don't do. We forget to like sleep and take care of ourselves and get massages and, you know, do all those things. So you got to have some self care in there too. But to me, that's when I've always known that this is what I need to do or what I should be doing in this moment. Tomorrow it might change, you know, next year it might change, but right now what I'm doing is making me uber happy. And so, you know, I wake up every day and I'm excited to get to work. I'm just coming downstairs, but <laughs> I'm still excited to get to work. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to bless to be a blessing. That's what I say all the time. How do you develop yourself personally? So my self development, I think has changed over the years. Um, I'm also an author, if I can add like one more thing to my list of things that I do. I have a book called Soul Journey, Travels of a Strong Woman. Um, and I wrote the book because, I do I can have, I don't know if I have a copy down here. I might. One. I do, ha <laughs> ha, I got one. one. There you go. Um, and so I wrote the book mainly because I wanted to, I, let me just back up. So almost five years ago, my mom passed away. Me and my mother were super close. I mean, super close, um, best friend. And so to lose her to cancer was super hard for me. And I started writing. I've always been a, a journaler <laughs> since I was very young. You know, I write in my journal all the time. I, this is one of them writing in my journal before you got here. Um, but that was my way of healing. Like I felt like 
I didn't really deal with it in the beginning. I really just kind of went into this busy mode, like, so I wouldn't have to feel it. So yeah, that was, that's the whole premise of the book. You know, you can take it and, and do whatever you want with it. Basically, you know, you can, um, customize it to however you like, and then go back and look at your, your, you know, what you read and what you wrote, um, and how you were affected in that moment. So anyway, long story short, I use that to heal. And I go back and do my soul journey as often as, you know, I feel like I need to. And so you can find it on lulu.com. Um, it's also on Amazon. So again, it's um, Soul Journey, Travels of a Strong Woman. And I'm um, working on the second, the second installation now. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm in a different space <laughs> mentally. So it may end up being a novel. It might be something similar, but... Anyway, so that's that. And then there's the company, obviously, Dirty Souls Footwear Group. Um, you can find us at DirtySoulsUnlimited.com. And on there, you can find more about the footwear production course that we do. We're looking to um, take that not just here in Newark. We want to take it worldwide if we can, you know, um, dream big. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, really just just touch some people and learn some things and teach some things at the same time. Um, and yeah, so if you're interested in the class, you can reach us on dirtysoulsunlimited.com. And if you're a brand and you're interested in, you know, footwear production or creating footwear, then we can talk about that too. And all of that information is online. Do you remember the exact moment where you were like, this is it, Dirty Souls? Not necessarily the name. Yeah. Um, we were talking, the we is my husband and I, we were talking about purpose. Um, because he, in addition to being Mr. You know, moving real fast guy, um, he also, and I think most men are this way, you know, they think about, I got to get the money. And it's mainly because they have, you know, families to provide for, whether it be wives and children or, you know, whatever. Like, they just mentally think about the fact that I got to go get the money, you know? And so he used to always say that, like, I don't know why you're going to all these meetings. Cause I'm the one that's, you know, the all over the place person that loves to meet people and I'm the marketer, you know? Um, and so after having been on TV for a small stint as well, when we lived in Charlotte, um, you know, I honed those skills of really just being able to, to talk to people and, um, get them to open up about certain things or, um, you know, just, just talking in general. I never really knew that was a skill until I met people who were like introverts, you know? Um, but we were talking about what we wanted to do with the rest of our lives. And I said, you know, I, we had kids really young and so we're really looking forward to an empty nest. <laughs> and so I said to him, I'm like, you know, I want to travel a lot. You know, we always, we already travel a lot, but when I say travel a lot, I mean, I want to be in Jamaica for three months at a time, you know, and come back here and then go somewhere else and, you know, that kind of thing. And I said, you know, how are we going to get there? And he's like, we need money. And I'm like, yes, we need the money. But at the same time, like, well, how are we going to get it? And what are we going to do to like make our lives feel fulfilled and at the same time earn a living? And so we started talking about purpose and I'm just a firm believer in if you don't have something deep inside you that drives you, that's not a material thing. Cause you know, and, and he doesn't think about money like, okay, I need money so I can go buy material stuff. I mean, obviously we do cause we consume as well. Um, but it was more so like, so I don't have to think about like, I want financial independence. Like I want to be financially independent is always his thing. And I agree with that. And I think if we couple that with, you know, purpose, then we're able to really make that happen. I won't say easily, but it's easy. It's easier, you know, than it would be if you're just out here chasing money all the time. And so um, as we were having that conversation and I was telling him what I want to do, I was like, you know, so I don't know what you're going to be doing, but I'm be over here for two months and then over there. And he's like, I'm going to be right there where you're at. Like, for some reason, even after as long as we've been married, that had not been a conversation. We never talked about what we wanted to do post the kids. You know, once everybody's gone to college and out of the house, 
we had we never really talked about that and i think it's again because we had kids so young the kids have always just been part of our life like wherever we go we take them you know they're just as cultured as we are <laughs> um and so you know that was the moment that i was like this is really this is it you know because we actually agree on what we want to do for the rest of our lives you know and um it's something we could do almost remotely you know for the most part and so that drives me today because my daughter is 14 and in the ninth grade and you know what that means i have three more years and then the nest is empty <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go on vacation when your life's a vacation? It's not about working for yourself, it's about building a legacy. You can do it if you do it, no excuses, can't refuse it. If you lack, get the course, you know where to find it. You've started TV 90 days, shift your life in different ways, make you see the light even if your current path is great.